Gabon's military junta has appointed a second transitional government within four months, although the opposition has complained about the appointment of some members of the ousted government. Gabon's opposition also is asking the ruling military to revise the transitional charter, which allows junta leaders to compete in future elections, but bars transitional ministers from doing so. Moki Edwin Kenzaka reports from neighboring Cameroon. Premier ministre, chef du gouvernement, Monsieur Raymond this is the voice of Guy Rosatanga Renaud, Secretary General of Gabon's Presidency, reading out the names of the members of a new transitional government on Wednesday. The list includes military figures and ex-ministers who served under former President Ali Bongo Onzimba, who was ousted in a coup in August. Rignold says the number of ministers has been increased to 31 from 26 in the first transitional government. He says that's because of military ruler General Brice Clotet Oligingema's efforts to assure transparency and facilitate the transition to constitutional order. But Gabon's opposition says the new transitional government is made up of Oligi's close military aides and friends of the Ali Bongo family, which dominated Gabon for 56 years and is accused of confiscating most of the country's oil wealth. Colonel Irich Manfumbi Manfumbi was appointed minister in Gabon's presidency in charge of special duties and as a government spokesperson. Nous parlons de reconstruire un pays qui a été profondément morcelé, qui a été profondément... Man Fumbi says General Brice Clotet Oligingema wants to involve all citizens in his program of reconstructing and bringing back dignity, which the people of Gabon have been yearning for since independence. He says Oligi is investigating politicians and senior state functionaries who have dirty track records and are suspected of corrupt practices that have impoverished Gabon. Raymond Dongsima, the civilian prime minister who was appointed to lead the first transitional government in September, will stay in this position. Gabon officials say Oligi retained Sima, a prominent opponent of Ali Bongo, in office to investigate financial crimes and make sure a transitional charter, the military issued to hand power to civilians by the end of 2025 is respected. But opposition and civil society groups are calling on the new government to revise the charter. Abe Ondo Osa, who claims he won Gabon's presidential election last August and that Ali Bongo stole his victory, says the military leader should be barred from contesting in any presidential poll. Osa says Articles 40 and 52 of the Transitional Charter state that members of the Transitional Government, the President of the Transitional Senate, and the President of the National Assembly cannot be candidates in a presidential election leading to civilian rule. But nothing prevents Oligi from taking part in that race. Gabon's opposition and civil society say presidential minister Mamfobi dismisses their claims. Mamfobi says civilians, opposition and civil society groups should be calm because no article in the transitional charter obliges Oligi to be candidates in the election that will hand power to civilian rule. He says Oligi knows what is good for Gabon and its citizens. Le président de la République a le droit de se présenter aux élections. Gabon's school leaders say the transitional government's immediate task are to prepare a national dialogue by April, fight corruption, improve the economy, and prepare elections before the end of 2025. Moki Edwin Kinzaka, VOA News, Yaoundé. Cameroon.
Prime Minister Rishi Sunak today urged Britain's unelected upper house of parliament to pass his plan to send migrants to Rwanda, calling it the will of the people. The Premier was speaking the day after he survived a key test of his leadership by fending off right-wing rebels to win a crunch parliamentary vote on the issue. Sunak says the elected House of Commons supports the legislation with, quote, very strong majority. The French news agency AFP says he is urging the House of Lords to pass the legislation without amendment so migrant flights to Rwanda could begin as soon as possible. The bill is the British leader's answer to a UK Supreme Court ruling late last year that deporting asylum seekers to Kigali is illegal under international law. The legislation, if passed in the upper chamber, will compel judges to treat Rwanda as a safe third country. It will also give UK ministers powers to disregard sections of international and British human rights legislation. Paul McKenzie and 94 others have been charged with terrorism following the death of 429 people. The defendants all denied the charges, which were read out in magistrate's court in Malidi, southeastern Kenya. The Kenyan cult leader is alleged to have encouraged members of his Good News International Church to move to Shakahora Forest and prepare for the end of the world. Hundreds would later die. Other charges relating to child torture and assault are due to be brought at a separate court hearing. In April 2013, Mackenzie was detained after bodies were found in mass graves in a remote forest about two hours drive from the coastal town of Malindi. Most showed signs of starvation, but some to children among them may have been assaulted according to the media reports the self-proclaimed pastor denies responsibility for the death saying his church had been closed since 2019 the request by the suspect defense lawyer for bail has been referred to another court Three opposition leaders in the Democratic Republic of Congo have jointly declared a nationwide protest scheduled for Saturday coinciding with President Felix Tshisekedi's second term in adulation. The Electoral Commission reported Tshisekedi's victory in last month's election with 73% of the vote. However, this outcome faced criticism as a sham from multiple opposition candidates, including Moise Katumbi, who officially secured second place with 18%, Martin Fayuru in third with 5%, and Anzuluni Bembe, who secured 1%. Allegations of flood and ballot staffing have been raised by the opposition leaders, leading to their call for demonstration on the inauguration day. Despite the claims, the leading opposition candidates opted not to pursue a legal challenge and the constitutional court has validated Tshikedi's victory. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe.